How would you like to improve your health and keep your family safe? You're listening to the Healthy Home Hacks podcast, where we firmly believe enjoying optimal health shouldn't be a luxury. Healthy Home Authorities and husband and wife team, Ron and Lisa, will help you create a home environment that will level up your health. It's time to hear from the experts. Listen in on honest conversations and gain the best tips and advice. If you're ready to dive in and improve your well being and increase your energy, you're in the right place. All right, here are your hosts, bow biologists, authors, media darlings, vicarious vegans, and avocado aficionados, Ron and Lisa Barris. Hello, everyone. Today's bonus episode is picking up from episode 31, From Cancer to Clean Beauty, A Mom's Fearless Journey, with our guest and founder of Authentic Skin Remedies, Amy Kernan. And if you haven't already, be sure to visit ronalisa.com forward slash podcast to catch this episode is there are two chances to win plant-based, vegan, cruelty-free skincare goodies totaling $238. You don't want to miss this. And also, we have a big announcement, guys. This is episode 32, and this wraps up season one of Healthy Home Hacks. It's so hard to believe Lisa and I cannot thank you enough for being part of this toxic free trek with us but stay tuned because we got some incredible guests and show topics up our organic sleeves for season two after we take a short break so everyone needs to pay attention to today's show because this affects teens men and women and we're talking about the dark side of antiperspirants and most deodorant brands. That's right. Many people are still unclear about the difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. Turns out the majority of people are smearing, spritzing on toxic chemicals to sensitive and sometimes freshly shaven areas without even realizing it. Where do these toxins go when they get released? Just think about it. Our armpits are in close proximity to the lymph nodes and the breast tissue. In fact, a study published in the European Journal of Cancer found underarm shaving with antiperspirant and deodorant use may play a role in breast cancer. Yes, Ron. And as we mentioned on episode 31, one in eight women today will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women and is the leading cause of death in women from their late 30s to early 50s. But breast cancer isn't the only concern. Antiperspirants use aluminum salts. Aluminum is a heavy metal that is linked to an increased risk in Alzheimer's disease and dementia. Unfortunately, it's not just aluminum that antiperspirant users need to be wary of. There is a host of other petrochemicals and preservatives that can disrupt hormones, cause cancer, and affect organ functions. Five of these include, I'm gonna go through just five that you need to be wary of. Get Go grab your bottle of <laughs> antiperspirant right now or your deodorant and let's see if you have any of these ingredients on the list. Starting with number one, triclosan. This is classified as a pesticide by the FDA and a probable carcinogen by the EPA. It's linked to all kinds of issues like skin irritation, allergies, and even thyroid issues. Propylene glycol. This is the active ingredient in antifreeze, guys. Propylene glycol is also used to soften products and it can cause damage to the central nervous system and heart. Number three, parabens. We've discussed these on the show many times. These are synthetic chemicals that cause hormone imbalances and they're linked to birth defects, organ toxicity, and an increase in hormone related cancers, including breast cancer. Number four, synthetic fragrances. The word fragrance or perfume on your ingredient label can mask hundreds of other chemicals, including phthalates. They're linked to a higher risk of birth defects in women with high levels of phthalates in their blood and urine. And finally, number five, aluminum, a metal and neurotoxin. It's linked to dementia, Alzheimer's disease, and breast cancer. I'm gonna give it to you guys straight. Most deodorants and all antiperspirants stink. No, really. They're designed to prevent our bodies from sweating. And while this sounds nice in theory, it's not. 
The real danger is that antiperspirants use aluminum, a neurotoxin, as the active ingredient to block the pores of our skin to prevent us from perspiring. However, sweating is one of our main body's functions to release toxins from our system. Well, good news. Someone who understands the importance of not just detoxification is our guest, Amy Kernan. Welcome to the show, Amy. Welcome, Thank you. Amy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amy, can you explain why we need an armpit detox before we do the healthy switch? So how does it work? Yes. Once you switch from your antiperspirant to deodorant, you're going to sweat, especially initially. That's actually a good thing because you're ridding your body of built-up toxins such as arsenic, cadmium, lead, mercury, according to a study published in the Journal of Environmental Public Health. The longer you use a natural deodorant, the less you tend to sweat. So when I developed my natural deodorant, which is called Balance, it's a seawater mist, the biggest complaint initially from people making the switch was the fact they had strong smells and stains on their clothes that they never had before. So when you quit an antiperspirant cold turkey, you should probably forget about wearing a white silk shirt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've had that experience. I don't know about you, Ron, but- Oh, at least you had, you had a TV example. I, I, had, a, I had a TV, yeah. Ron and I, I, actually it was our very first TV appearance. That's how long ago I switched. No way. And I had like a silk shirt on, Amy, and um, yeah, not a good combo. And it was like, I could not stop sweating. I was under the hot lights to boot. Oh my gosh, and so, what show was it? It was a local cable show here in Orange County. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen you guys have been on some really. Uh, no, thank God it shows. wasn't like the big national show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen on there. No, no, it was a little show. And actually, you couldn't see it. My hair was long and covered it. But so yeah. just, you know, be prepared for that, guys. Exactly. So because of that, my training as a strong voice for the Breast Cancer Fund, which is an organization I volunteered with, focusing on 100% prevention they taught me there needs to be a detox period. I mean, if you think about it, depending on how long you've used the antiperspirant, many of us since our teens, there is years of a backed up bacterial, I say sludge, that oh. begins to release <laughs> when you stop blocking your natural perspiration. So the yellow stains on your clothes and the smells. <laughs> okay, and to repeat that, guys, if you missed it, it's a backed up bacterial sludge. Okay. I know it's not really as like, <laughs> it's not as graphic. I, I've been, I went through it. And to be honest, right. It depends on how toxic you are. If you're a person that's right. using all kinds of name brand toxic products, you're going to have more backup and you're eating a yep. bad diet. You're going to have more. If you're a, living a pretty healthy lifestyle, it's going to be more mild. So yeah. Is there a good rule of thumb? Like how long does that last typically that so, whole sludge process? Yeah. So I basically <laughs> say- process about a week to 10 days. Um, so I also make a joke not to have any important events that you may be going to because you might be giving off some strong pheromones in those first few days. I had a lot of friends that when the lockdown happened, decided to do it because they knew they weren't going anywhere. Mm, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, but then their poor husband and the kids were <laughs> stuck with them. <laughs> That's mean, Amy. <laughs> uh, so that's just part of the detoxing process. Can, is, can you explain anything further around that? Yeah, I mean, well, I just want to say, too, when I started researching and developing my natural deodorant, I found it interesting. If you go to the deodorant aisle and, you know, even the grocery store, most of the female deodorants are antiperspirants, and most of the men's are just deodorant. I mean, why? Yeah. Like, isn't that why do we have to block our sweat? No, why is that? Don't. They like to toxify the women <laughs> as if we don't have enough products. We talked about that right? in the last episode. And women use what 168 unique ingredients a day on average. Oh, you know, right. let's just add some more in the in the antiperspirant. Right. And you know, if you think about it, you know, we're blocking ourselves from, you know sweating. And right. nature has given us many healthy benefits of sweating. It reduces the risk of kidney stones. And in addition to toxins, sweating through exercise releases excess salt and calcium from the body. And according to researchers from the University of Washington, you can reduce the risk of kidney stones just by sweating. 
So without sweating, excess minerals travel to the kidneys and urine and potentially form kidney stones. A lot of people are getting Botox in their armpits, mm, right? Have you true. heard that? To, to yes. stop from sweating, it's the same thing because, you know, we're talking about like the, the ingredients in antiperspirants and deodorant, but, but Botox, that you're, you just blocked off a pathway of your body to mm -hmm. release toxins. So that, how smart right. is that? You know, that's not a good, that's just not a, and I know, so I know there's a, and I think it's an illness. I think there's a name for it where people have excessive sweating. On I their hands too. Yeah. I know that's a different thing and I'm not going to, I don't want to us to really go there because that's not yeah. what the topic of this is today. But for regular people, why would you do that? Why would you block that? Off? Yeah. And it's, it's right by your lymph nodes and it's right by your breasts, you know? Yeah. So another benefit of sweating naturally is it re regulates your body temperature. So it actually, the evaporation of sweat on your skin, which is your largest organ, it helps us maintain a cool body temperature while preventing overheating and extreme heat during an intense workout. So without that regulation, you can feel dizzy or faint or mm -hmm. develop skin rashes. I know yeah. a lot of people, antiperspirant gives them skin rashes and, you know, ingrown hairs and, you know, it redness on their armpits. And then the last thing is acne. I mean, sweat causes our pores of our skin to open and release the buildup that lead to breakouts. Yeah. And you were mentioning like... A lot of people put deodorant or anti. Well, we're talking about antiperspirant is the real issue, right. Um, right. because the antiperspirant antiperspirants use aluminum, aluminum salts to block those pores. Mm -hmm. Deodorants, deodorants don't. Um, right. There can still be harmful chemicals, as I mentioned in deodorants, but um, the real right. issue is you want to ditch the antiperspirant. But people will put antiperspirant on and then go to the gym. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> it's like, wait, that's where you want to that's sweat. That's the sludge. <laughs> that's, that's where the sludge is building. <laughs> so, that's where the sludge is Just think about it. <laughs> okay, so Amy, what products do you use or recommend that someone's listening, our listener says, hey, gosh, I've never heard of this. I've never heard of an armpit mm -hmm. detox cleanse. Where do I start? The armpit cleanse is actually pretty easy, and I actually sell it on my website. We're actually giving one away as part of a sweet on Ron and Lisa's website. But to do it, you need to use something, grain, grainy or a loofah, to massage your lymph system, increase the circulation in your pit area, and exfoliate. So in a hot steam shower, you can use my polish, a sugar exfoliating buff, and massage for a minute until the sugar is gone. You can also do it with a dry brush like a loofah, and soak inside an Epsom salt bath. Mm, for added right. measure, you can add baking soda in the bath, which promotes sweating, which helps the body release toxins from the pores. A good way to test if detoxing from Epsom salts works is if you ever had a hangover or fighting a flu or a cold, after 20 minutes of using the sugar scrub and then the Epsom salt, you'll notice a difference in how you feel probably an hour or two later. And I tell people this all the time and it's like there, it, it actually, you actually feel a difference, you know? So you so, do the sugar, you do the sugar scrub under your armpits for 20 minutes and then you get in the bathtub with some Epsom salt and the baking soda. Yep. And, and actually for added measure, like I said, if you have a cold or a flu or anything, you just want to detox your whole body. I, I, I have clients that have gone through chemo and radiation. I have a lot of cancer patients that come to me after and I recommend not during chemo, but after to do what you do is you stand over the tub and you just take the sugar scrub dry and do a dry rub on your entire body. Obviously focus on your, your pits and, you know, where the lymph system is and then soak for, you know, 20, 30 minutes, but you actually do feel better. You know, if you have a hangover and you have a headache, like literally an hour later, you know, you just, you feel better. So. Wow. That's really yeah. great. Oh, quick. I, I think um, I use, I love the polish, which is Amy's um, authentic skin remedies scrub. And I used it and the first time this week and I loved it. My skin was like so smooth. And it's interesting because we don't normally scrub our armpits. That's not a place <laughs> with a loofah type, with something grainy, right? That's just not right. like, we're not sort of trained to do that. So in regards to the armpit area, does it make uh -huh. a difference if you have hair there? if you're a man? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the sugar scrub, a lot of men use the sugar scrub on their beard to soften it oh, before okay. shaving. So I, I think, I don't think so. Okay. Um, okay. 
But back to the cleanse. So now you've kind of, you know, activated your lymph system and your circulation. So um, what you have to do next, this is very important. You can take a teaspoon or tablespoon of baking soda in a little cup, add some water, and it makes a paste. Um, just add it enough to till it turns into a paste. And then, oh, also the baking soda needs to be aluminum free. <laughs> Well, uh, yes. you know what? I'm glad you brought, I'm glad you brought that up because this is a something that people get very confused about. Baking sodas don't have aluminum, only baking powder. Oh, got it. Only baking okay. powder. But I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. a lot of people think that. So there is yeah. no aluminum in baking soda, only baking powder. Okay. Yeah. I think you can use baking powder as well because they they're very similar, but you basically apply the paste to your armpits. You can leave it on all day unless you're worried about it getting on your clothes. And then, you know, you can wash it off after 20 minutes. Okay. So the antifungal, antibacterial properties of the baking soda absorb and deodorize some of that build out that's coming out. And sometimes if it's really bad, you may need to do this a few times in a day in the beginning. Okay. But I had a dancer call me the other day and she didn't want to have the white powder, you know, on, on her leotard. And so I looked up a couple options. You can do either lemon squeezed in warm water and apply it with a cotton ball. Okay. But even better is apple cider vinegar mm, applied okay. with a cotton ball. Yeah. Um, so that's, then once you do that, that, oh, that seems pretty easy. So that's, you could do that yeah. instead of the baking Those soda. are just three, three super easy substitutes um, or three different options to kind of, you know, get rid of the um, bacteria. And so then you just spray the deodorant, which is balanced or whatever deodorant you have, any natural deodorant. If you want to check um, the score, you can go on to skin deep or think dirty, like we said in the other um, episode. Right. But, um, and that's um, for listeners who did not listen to episode 30, that is the Skin Deep database. And that's mm -hmm. through EWG, the Environmental Working Group. And they list thousands and thousands of products with a toxicity score from one to 10. I think I said one to seven last time, but it's actually one to 10. I'm going to give you guys hang on till the end because I'm going to list some of my favorite um, deodorants that are very low toxicity. Oh, yep. That's excellent. And speaking of ingredients too, what ingredients are in your cleanse, Amy? I don't include the baking soda. <laughs> no. But the cleanse, if you buy it off the website, you get the polished sugar exfoli exfoliating buff, and then you get the balanced seawater mist. So the ingredients are all in Latin on my website. As you know, organic ingredients are in Latin. But since the last time I spoke, Latin was probably in ninth grade. Um, <laughs> Good for you. I'm not going to try to... Why are that? You know, I didn't know that. Why are the, why are the ingredients in Latin? I don't know. I the mean, Italians I are healthier. I'm looking at the ingredients and I'm not even going to try to, you know, yeah. say them. So I'll just use the English version. Thank but if you, you. want to see the Latin version, you can go on my website. <laughs> so the sugar buff has organic brown sugar organic avocado oil, um, and just a scent. So an organic lavender or whatever um, organic oil uh, to, to make a scent. So it's very simple, um, but the brown sugar is really, really grainy. And then the avocado oil actually nourishes as well. So it's great on your body. Sometimes you can use the scrub and you don't even need um, moisturizer afterwards. Nice. And then the balanced seawater mist is purified seawater, which actually balances your pH, and then organic sandalwood um, oil, organic rosewood oil, organic lavender oil, geranium oil, and the pH balancing element of the seawater, and then the antifungal, antibacteria elements of the sandalwood, rosewood, and lavender actually also make this product great for a face toner. You can spray a cotton ball and use it on your face as a mm, toner. Nice. Or my favorite way, you use it as a texturizing spray for beach waves in your hair in between washings. Wow. I, <laughs> yeah, you talked about the multi-use of a lot of your products. Yeah. Instead of having yep. 5,000 bottles in your medicine cabinet, yep. you really only need a few because um, they, they are multi-purpose, really. And the, um, the one other secret use, my boys play soccer and I bring the balance to the soccer field and I spray them when they're hot. And then I also spray their feet. Oh, just <laughs> cooling. Yeah. <laughs> well, just because they stink. Oh, because they stink. So the you second spray is for mom. Nice. Second one's for mom. Yeah. <laughs> one in the purse for the stinky teenage 
<laughs> I love it. Okay. So friends, I want to, as I just mentioned, I want to leave you with some of my favorite brands of deodorant. Remember, I want to recap. We're talking about deodorants, not antiperspirants. Antiperspirants clog your pores and block you from detoxification. You've probably been using them. And if so, it's time for an armpit detox that Amy just talked about. And it's time to switch to a natural deodorant. Amy doesn't sell those. So I'm going to give you a few of my favorites that are free of parabens, propylene glycol, petrochemicals, aluminum compounds, and synthetic ingredients, including artificial colors and fragrances. Whether you prefer a stick, a roll-on, a cream, or a spray, you'll be sure to find a deodorant to suit your sweaty needs while avoiding the pitfalls of antiperspirants. Okay, I love the sprays. I find them to be very cooling and they smell so good. Um, you don't get any residual stains like you do sometimes with the sticks. Uh, but one of my favorite brand is Crystal. A lot of you guys probably remember when they first came out with the rock and a lot of people were like, uh, I don't know, that's a little too granola. <laughs> right? Well, now they're, they've come a long way. Um, they've got beautiful, wonderful sprays. And their deodorants are comprised of mineral salts and natural plant essences that are made without aluminum chloride, aluminum chlorohydrate, or aluminum zirconium. So when you look at the ingredient labels, you guys, the aluminum can be under different names. Okay, so you want to look mm. for that. That's they fine. do not have parabens or artificial fragrance, and the entire line is vegan and cruelty-free, and I absolutely love the smells. They have lavender and white tea, chamomile and green tea, pomegranate, and vanilla and jasmine. Okay, so that's the Crystal brand. Very easy to find. Next is Herba Viva. This is a smaller company, but they were the first one of the first sprays of using essential oils that I fell in love with. They happen to be USDA certified organic, which I love, and they're cruelty free and free of chemicals. And they use organic essential oils and organic grain alcohol to reduce perspiration and naturally fight underarm bacteria. They've got- Oh, you mean sludge. You mean sludge. sludge. <laughs> they reduce that sludge. And they've got- my um, fat word. <laughs> Is One of my favorite podcast. Ryan's love sludge. We got it. It's a sludge. We got to add that in the title. Um, Jasmine and grapefruit is one of their scents that I love. Next is a company called JK Naturals, and they're California based. They're handcrafted using certified organic ingredients, and they have sticks. So if you like, um, and they have creams and roll-ons too, but they do not have a spray. They use steam distilled essential oils, like scents with lavender and peppermint and tea tree. And um, they feature antimicrobial and odor limiting properties. So that's a really great brand. Um, and they even have a line for teens, which I think is really cool. That's JK Naturals. They have a special line just for teens. Next would be Native Deodorant. You may have heard of them. They're pretty readily available. And they are composed of ingredients like beeswax, baking soda, coconut oil, and shea butter to naturally fight odors. And they have, I love it, a charcoal deodorant that harnesses the power of activated charcoal. And they combine it with citrus undertone, so it smells amazing. And I love their new package-free packaging, which our producer will love. It's made from paperboard and ships in a 100% recycled container. And that comes in a stick. Native deodorants are stick. Did and you then say plastic-free? You said plastic-free, Yeah, free, it's right? plastic-free packaging. Isn't that neat? It's just paper, paper plastic. So, and then Pretty Frank is kind of a funny name. They used to be called something else. I think they were Pity Paste. They're made from natural and organic ingredients that use baking soda, as Amy mentioned, baking soda is so good for odor, odor absorption, right? It works in your house. You can put it in your carpet for odor absorption. And guess what? It works under your armpits too. This brand also uses coconut oil and shea butter for moisturizing and organic arrowroot. Arrowroot help, keeps you dry. You can make your own non-toxic deodorant. And to be honest, we have recipes for this on ronandlisa.com. If you search, there are recipes to make your own. This line is cruelty-free and they come in sprays with lime and lavender scents. And they also have a version for sensitive skin that is baking soda free because baking soda can be irritating. Right. And this line, the Pretty Frank is available on a stick, a spray, and a cream. Can I do a shout out to my favorite deodorant? Yes, please do. <laughs> please shout. Oh, bonus. So bonus I, number six. What is it? It's uh, La Vanilla. Oh, um, I've never and heard what's, that Yeah, lavanilla.com. But what's cool is they are vegan and all of that, but they use probiotics 
Mm. You know, it's in yogurt and kombucha. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just love the smells. I, I actually have gotten it at Sephora before, but. Um, okay, can, good to know. Yeah, yeah I, I know. because vanilla. La Vanilla. Okay, good. Because like these are a lot of the brands. Some of them are small. You're going to have to order online or boutique stores. But yeah. some of these, some of these you're going to find at Target and your yeah. regular grocery store even. Yeah. So yeah. don't don't think that this, listeners, don't think that, oh, you know, I can't, I, you know, it's going to be too expensive. Or I'm not going to be able to find it. These are readily available, some of the brands that we mentioned. Mm-hmm. Well, excellent job, ladies. Well, there you have it. You can detox your deodorant because let's face it, antiperspirants, are the pits so thank you again amy for being here we really appreciate you and you can find amy's armpit cleanse on our website at authenticskin.com and you have a chance to win a kit at ronalisa.com forward slash podcast yes thank you amy thank you thank, thank you, you so guys so much for having me it's so much fun oh thank it's you. fun and it's so important so so important for everybody you guys we're gonna see you shortly as this episode wraps season one of the healthy home hacks podcast be sure to subscribe so you can find out when we're back and stay tuned for more great interviews coming to an earbud near you in season two Bye, season everyone. Two. Bye, everyone. See you next Bye. season. Bye. This episode of the Healthy Home Hacks podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more healthy living strategies and tactics to help you create the healthy home you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.